So, I know you've just been dying to know and learn how you can apply the law of B.O. Savart to do something, right? So, in this video I'm going to show you how you can get the field from a long straight wire using the law of B.O. and Savart. Okay. So, let me draw a picture here. So let's say that you have a, a wire that's carrying a current uh, upwards. And this is like a super long wire, right? So, um, and we know that the wire creates like a magnetic field around itself that gets weaker as you get further away. So like we know that the answer <laughs> to this is given by kind of a famous formula here, right? So the magnetic field basically is going to be proportional to the current that's being carried in the wire, but it's going to be inversely proportional to the distance away from the wire. So why don't we show that distance here? So you've got like a point out here, this is a point P, and that distance x is the perpendicular distance away from the wire, right? Of course, the stuff in front, those are just your constants. So how do we get this from, from the law of B on Savart, right? So the law of B on Savart says this. It says that dB is equal to constant, Oh my gosh, there it is. And if you're thinking that, yeah, we're going to have to do an integral, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> so what we want to do is kind of like take this apart and look at it in terms of an integral. Um, if you remember back when we talked about a line of electrical charge that was spread out to infinity, we also had to do an integral to find the electric field at a point that was a certain distance away. And so we're going to actually do a very similar thing here, except with the magnetic field. Um, in fact, the results are very similar, too, because if you recall, for an electric field, the electric field drops off as 1 over x, just like the magnetic field does. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so let's set this up, and here's the way that we're going to do it. We need to have a, a, a chunk of current, okay? So we need dl. Now, technically DL is a length, but it's a length of current carrying wire, okay? And, of course, that little chunk is going to produce current at point P. So this is our vector R, right? And we've talked about how there's an R hat vector, right? It's right here. That's a unit vector that goes in the same direction as R. We've got an angle going on, right? That angle is going to be phi. Okay. Um, now, let's, what else do we have to do here? Oh, so this chunk, right, this piece here, is going to produce a dB that goes into the page, away from us. I will leave that to you as an exercise in the right-hand rule. You should be able to show that this chunk produces a magnetic field that goes away from you, into the page. Okay. So our focus right now is going to be to figure out mathematically to get to this formula for the strength. All right, so we've got um, a fixed distance x, right? And then we want to create some type of a um, coordinate that we can use. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our origin, let's see, we're going to put a y-axis this way. So this is like going to be the positive y direction. This is the negative y direction. Um, we're going to start off by making this wire have a certain length. 
positive A, negative A, and again, this is the origin. And the game that we're going to play is we're going to, we're going to set up the integral for a, for a wire that has a length of plus A to minus A. That's a length of 2A. But then we're going to let A go to infinity to find our, our, our formula. Okay. Um, I think the only other thing that we want to write down here is to note that DL, since DL points in the Y direction, DL is going to basically be DY. In other words, that little, that small length of wire is actually corresponding to a dy, right? That you would have on this axis. And so we need that for the calculus part. All right, so let's do it. So how do you find kind of like b total, right? By, by adding up all these pieces, right? You're going to have to add up all the, the different chunks here, up and down the thing. So that's going to require an integral. So we'll have to add them up. That's what the integral means. And yes, you guessed it. We're going to have to substitute um, all this stuff in for this. And a lot of it comes out of the integral. And what doesn't we have to deal with. So, um, looking at that, I can tell right away that my constant stuff comes out of the integral. My current will come out of the integral. However, I got a problem here. My r squared is not going to come out of the integral because can you see that the r, this diagonal distance, is going to change as you go to different chunks on the wire. So that, unfortunately, is going to remain in the integral. And then we'll um, see what happens with this other bit over here. So let's let's write this again. Okay. And um, now we got to deal with things. All right. So the first thing we can deal with is why don't we look at the the dl crossed into the r hat vector. Okay. Now dl is the same thing as dy, isn't it? dl and dy, dl and dy. And when I'm crossing dl into this r hat vector, what I'm really effectively doing is I'm finding the sine of the angle between those two things, like we know for the, for the law of b and sub r. So basically this piece here is becoming that. And we still have to divide by r squared, which I'm going to write next. Okay, so pause for a minute, just process that. So dl cross r is becoming this. That's your angle. Now, when you get into this other part about um, squaring, finding the distance squared, here's what you do. Like we have done before, you have a big old right triangle. x is this the base. And ooh, the height is y. Y is our is our runner. It's our variable. Y is going to is going to range, okay, from zero to a. So if this is a right triangle with sides x and y, then r must be equal to x squared plus y squared square root, right? Because Pythagorean theorem. Um, and then you are squaring it again because of this. Okay, I think we're good so far. Um, why don't we simplify? I'm going to leave this down here, by the way. You might be wondering why. Why would he do such a thing? I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not going to simplify that. Because I still have to deal with a sign, okay? And remember, this is a trick we played before, that if you have a picture like this, the sign is just the ratio of the, what is it, the opposite over the hypotenuse, okay? 
And so the sine of the, uh, this angle that's here can actually be written as a ratio of x like that. This is an x on the top. Now you, you look at that and you figure that out. I could take five minutes to explain it and draw it, but think about why the sine of that angle has to be equal to this ratio. Think about your basic trig, okay? That's the key thing. So you might want to pause the video at this point and make sure that you can verify why that is. Um, the rest of this is going to be like kind of nice because now you've got the square root here multiplied by another square root. That's going to make this whole thing, these two terms are going to become, they will, when you multiply them, it's going to be like this. It'll be like x squared plus y squared, whole thing, square rooted but cubed because you're, ba you're basically multiplying the square here times another factor of 1. Okay, so now let's simplify. <laughs> and then I think we can integrate. So we have b equals mu naught i over 4 pi um, times the integral of x dy over x squared plus y squared square root cubed. Right. Now, at this point, you cry a little bit, and you think, oh my gosh, that's hard. And, and so, honestly, what you should just do is look up this integral in a table, okay? That's, that's, that's what you should do. Um, and by the way, going back to our picture, we want to integrate from negative a to positive a, don't we? Because that's what the picture shows us. So we want to put endpoints here. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to put a squiggle here. And this is going to be from an integral table. And, and yeah, on a, on a test or something, you'd be given the integral that, so you can convert this. But what this integral actually um, becomes when you use the table is it goes to 2a so the whole integral part becomes this. Notice everyone that the y drops out, doesn't it? You don't expect to have a y in this in your answer, do you? Because the y is the runner, it's the variable. But you do expect to have an a in your answer. And of course x isn't phased by any of this. I mean you could actually take the x out of this integral if you wanted to because it's sort of a constant. Okay, so then we'll put this back together. And um, hey, we're actually almost done, <laughs> amazingly enough, because um, I'm going to make a, a kind of a hand-waving argument here and say that when you let a go to infinity, Okay, looking at our picture, if you let it go to infinity, then um, you should know that x squared plus a squared square root actually goes to a. Aha. Okay. It does, right? Because x is just whatever. x doesn't change. But if a gets really, really big, a dominates. You square it, take the square root, you're going to be getting something that approaches a. That's a limit thing, right? And so what happens is that in the limit of a going to infinity, right, that this thing here, because it's becoming a, it kind of has the effect of canceling out the a that was upstairs, right? And um, then you're left with just 2 over x, which is going to give us the formula that we were sort of trying to get in the beginning. So what we end up with here is that mu naught i, and then the 2 is going to do a little canceling thing here, and we end up with that. Uh, oops, and I forgot the x. <laughs> Don't forget that. It's important because you have to have that inverse proportion. Okay, so that sticks around. Now, obviously, I did this in a way that your math teachers would probably be very frustrated with because I didn't show all the steps and the limits. But my point is not to teach you math, it's to just kind of show you how you go from this integral into, you know, something which 
is what we um, experimentally know to be true. Okay, so you can follow up on the details if you'd like with that. But that's what we had to do there. That's what we did. All right. So again, using starting with the law of Beyond Savart, we set up an integral, and we integrated the current through a length of wire to find the magnetic field strength at a point that's a certain distance away from the wire, the perpendicular distance x. And we got what we wanted to get. All right, hope that was helpful.